Hmm. Okay. So in last lecture, what we have covered, we have seen the block diagram of RAM chip. So this is 128. This shows the data bit, right? And this is one word. So one word size is eight bits. This shows how many words are there. So there are 128 words. Now to address 128 words, we require seven bit address line. As this is a RAM, so we can read the RAM and we can write to the RAM. So there are two lines, read and write, right? So modern RAM chip has only one, right? If it is one, then read. If it is zero, then write. But it is good if you have two separate lines for read and write. Then two chips, chip select CS1 and CS2 bar, right? So this chip select is useful like here you can have one and here you can have zero at that time this chip will be enabled. So sometimes uh, it happens that your memory consists of RAM and ROM both at that time you can use this second one for selection between RAM and ROM and also if you are using single RAM at that time also right sometimes for lower bits means zero you want to enable your ram chip so here you will give voltage and here you can give zero right at that time this chip will be enabled sometimes at the higher value means at the one you want to enable your uh, chip so at that time you can ground this one you can ground this one and give voltage to CS1 means 1 to CS1 and this chip will be enabled. So this will reduce your inward gate right. For 1 you want to enable you can use this one for 0 if you want to enable your chip you can use this one right and you can use this both as well right if there is a combination of RAM and ROM and we have seen the function table right hmm. so when it is 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, right the memory function is inhibit and your data was this that will be in high impedance state means no use of signals at this level then 1 0 at that time your chip is enabled but if you don't specify read and write Right, your RAM chip will not do anything. Then read 0, write 1, it is in a write mode and the data will be taken. Okay, from your data bus to RAM means data will be returned to the address specified from this address line. Then 1, when read is 1, we don't take, uh, we don't care about write. Okay, so in that memory function is read and the data is output data from your then we are reading the data okay so we can perform read and write that's why we have bi-directional data bus then we have seen the room chip so 512 cross 8 room 8 bit data bus now this is unidirectional why because we can just read from the room right read write is not performed continuously in rom right at the time of manufacturing the rom can be written and there is a 9 bit address right 512 words are there each word size is 8 bits so to address 512 words we require 9 bit address 2 raised to 9 512 then to select CS1 and CS2 bar, there is no read and write. Why? Because whenever chip is enabled, what ROM will do? It will uh, give data to data bus. Means data will be read, uh, read from the ROM. These two chip we have select. We have seen that the memory, the main memory is combination of RAM and ROM. Now let's see the 
connection of CPU and this uh, memory. Okay. So we want to build 512 bytes of RAM. Okay. And 512 bytes of ROM. My main memory is 1 GB. Out of that 1 GB, 512 bytes of RAM and 512 bytes of ROM. The word size is 1 byte. Word size is one byte. Okay. Now the chip that I have is the RAM 128 cross 8, which we have seen. That RAM is available with me. Okay. And room 512 cross 8. Means this specification is available with me. And I can use n number of RAM of this specification and number of room of this specification. Right? Okay. Let's first take room 512 bytes of room. So room size is 512 bytes. So this room, this also provides 512 bytes, right? Because this is 8 bits. One word size is 1 byte. And 512. So 512 bytes room. So we require only one room chip of this specification. Now 512 bytes of RAM. So 512 bytes of RAM. So one byte. Right. What specification available with us? That is 120 cross 8 bits means one byte. This specification is available. So this is one word. 512 divided by 128. This is 2 raised to 9 and 2 raised to 7. So if you divide this, then 2 raised to 9 minus 7 means 2 raised to 2, so 4. So we require 4 RAM chip of this specification. Right? So when you use 4 RAM chip of this specification and 1 ROM chip of this specification, you can construct this memory 512 bytes of RAM and 512 bytes of ROM. <clears throat> so, this thing we have seen. Now, let's see the connection. So, this is your CPU. So, CPU can read data from memory and can write data to memory. So, in CPU, we have data bus. So, this data bus. This is used to read or write data to memory or to get data from okay then we have write read line then we have address bus line right so here 16 bit address bus we have a 16 bit address bus so what this address bus does it gives the address from uh, to which we can write or from where we can read. Okay, if it is a RAM, you can write to that address or you can read from that address. If it is a ROM, then you can read from those. You can read from that ROM. Okay, now let's see. It's very easy. Right. So as we have seen, what we are going to do, we are constructing 512 bytes of RAM and 512 bytes of ROM, and we have just calculated how many RAM of 128 cross 8 require. Right. So four RAM are required. So RAM one, RAM two, RAM three, RAM four. So the RAM block diagram I am using. So this is four RAM and one ROM. Okay, 512 cross 8. So I have placed the chips. Okay, as per the requirement. Now let's see the connection. This is your data bus, right? So data bus will be connected to RAM and ROM, right? For RAM, data bus is bi directional. Data bus is bi directional. For ROM, it is unidirectional. 
means from ROM you can put data on data bus or RAM you can put data from da uh, to data bus or you can get data from this data bus based on this read and write line okay this is data bus now <coughs> you can see the address line address line 7 total 7 bits 7 bits 7 bits right this is the address line so 1 to 7 I am giving to each chip 1 to 7 I am giving to each chip right so in RAM 7 bits so I am giving that 7 bit address line in ROM I have given 1 to 7 but here you can see address line 9 so take this one 8 and 9 so now the address line of ROM is also done 1 to 7 8 9 okay now this address line 8 and 9 that is useful that is useful for ROM for ROM for RAM we are using this address line but one another thing is when we have a RAM when we have RAM so we need a selection between RAM means which RAM right so for that we will use this 8 and 9 now your line number 10 line number 10 you can see line number 10 that is given to CS2 bar for RAM and after inward gate not gate to ROM right what is the meaning when this 10th bit is 0 10th bit is 0 your RAM will be selected right because here you will get 0 so this will be enabled right of course you require cs1 as well but right now using 10th bit this bit we are giving selection between ram and row if your 10th bit is 1 this is 1 then here you will get 1 and at that time if it is 1 whatever the value you have in cs1 this will be disabled and one will be here it will convert uh, invert it and you will get zero here right so based on this cs1 this chip will be enabled right so this 10th bit for this configuration is used to select between ram and rom okay and as i said this 8 and 9 line that is used suppose using 10th bit we have selected RAM, right? So there are four RAMs. Out of these four RAMs, which RAM to select that thing we require eight and nine. So you can use decoder here, right? Take this eight and nine line in the decoder. In the decoder. So what is the use of decoder? This is two cross four decoder. In this decoder, based on the line 8 and 9 it will give you 1 in any of the output right so this 0 will be connected to cs1 this one will be connected to cs1 of ram 2 same with for 2 and 3 okay now if suppose value is 0 0 Using this 10th bit, you have given 0, so means RAM is selected, means here you will get 0, 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 right? So for CS2 bar, right, you are getting proper input to enable your RAM. Now, whichever RAM will uh, get 1 in CS1, that RAM, that RAM will be enabled. And that is taken care by your decoder. So out of these four, only in one line it will give one. Right? So if this is zero, zero, eight is zero, nine is zero, then this will be selected and you will get one here. In rest, you will not get any 
output that will be 0. Here you will get 1, this is 1, this is a 0 input, this RAM will be enabled, RAM 1. If this is 1, 1, then 0, 0, 0 and this will be 1. So this is 1 and here 0, so 1, 0, so RAM is enabled, so RAM 4 is selected, right? So for this configuration, 10th bit is used to select between RAM and ROM, 8 and 9 it is used to select between RAMs, which RAM, okay. If you have more RAM, more ROM, then this configuration will change, okay, decoder size might, uh, will be changed, okay. Then your right, right line will be connected, right line is connected to right of each RAM. Right line is connected to right of each RAM. Now see that this red line, read is connected to each read of RAM and that is connected to CUS1 of ROM. Means if ROM is selected, if ROM is selected and if CPU give read, right, so data will be read, will, uh, you will get the data from, right. So using this read and write, uh, read and write, CPU has a control after giving your address bus, right, CPU has a control when to start write and when to start read. Okay. Suppose this is enabled, it is 1, it is 0, but read and write, no value is given right now for read and write, address is also taken from 1 to 7. But when CPU will select read or write, read or write, at that time the operation will be performed. So CPU is controlling this. Of course this address bus, this is also given by CPU, but after giving address bus, when to take that data or when to put that data, that control is with CPU. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now let's take the example. So this is the address given by the CPU, and this is a 16 bit address line. You can see it's a 16 bit address. This is a 16 bit address. Right now, 11 to 16 unused lines. We are not using 11 to 16. Okay. Then, so this is 16 bit address bus. Now, this last 7 bits, last 7 bits, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. These are 1 to 7. So, going as an address to RAM and initial 7 bits or you can say uh, and is most significant bit so 7 least significant bits are given then this is the 8 bit right so 8 bit is here and this is a 9th bit this is a 9th bit right so remember this this is one line number one and this is 16 so this is 8 and this is 9 so 8 and 9 so when you decode it you need to read like this 0 1 that binary value 0 1 means 1 okay 9 is most significant bit here okay then <coughs> so 8 and 9 is also given now this 8 and 9, 8 and 9 will work as an address for this room, right, 8 is 1, 9 is 0, that 9 is most significant value, okay, now what happened, and your 10th bit, that is 0, that is used to select between RAM. Now see, what is your 10th bit? 0. 10th bit is 
zero means your RAM is selected, right? And with is zero, so means your RAM is selected, right? Because in ROM, this will invert it and give one. So if this is one, this will invert it and make it zero. So whatever the value you have in CS1, but as the input to CS2 bar is one, this ROM will not be enabled. So zero RAM is enabled. Now out of this four RAM, which RAM? Out of this four RAM, which RAM? Right. So for that, use eight and nine and from 8 and 9 you get to know that it is RAM 2 right because in decoder the output will be passed or 1 will be passed to this line rest will be 0 rest will be 0 ok so now this will be selected so RAM 2 RAM 2 is selected so using 10 we have selected between ram and rom and using 8 and 9 we have selected ram 2 now this is ram 2 and it is now enable address that is also given this one so cs1 this is done this is done address is also given right so this address is passed to the ram so it will locate the byte to that address this given address right because at a time you can read 8 bits word size is 8 bits so 8 bits you can read which is at this address address super j beta sir okay now <coughs> still the address is located but the operation is not specified yet read or write so you can see all the things are with RAM, address is there, chip is enabled, but still the operation is not performed, right? So when CPU give read 1, right, means now you have read 1, we now will not take care about this write. So from read, the data will be, this will be enabled and data will be passed to data bus and to CPU. Right. If read is zero, if his read is zero and write is one, then the data will be taken from the data bus and at this address the data will be placed. Right. So this way it will perform the operation. Okay. Now suppose instead of four. You have 8 RAM. You have 8 RAM. At that time, you have 8 RAM. So, address line 1 to 7. That's fine. As you have 8 RAMs in decoder, you require 3 inputs 8, 9, and 10. So this is 3 by 8 decoder. Okay. 8 and 9 will go as address to this, as address line is 9. Okay. But now you cannot use this 10th bit to select between RAM and ROM. You need to use 11th bit to select between RAM and ROM. Okay. So this way you need to change. Okay. Now let's see the starting address and entry address of each chip. Right. Using this 16 address bus. So let's see the memory address map. So right now for this configuration, 11 to 16 are not used. So all are zero. All are zero. Right? So this 16 bits, if you are going to convert in hexa, then 4, 4, 4, and 4 bits. Right? 4 multiplied by 4, 16. And each four bits you can represent into hexa number that will give you a hexa number. Now for RAM 1, what is the starting address? For RAM 2, RAM 1, what is the ending address? Now look at the diagram for RAM 1. 
for RAM one starting address. So this 16 bit, 16 bit, 11 to 16. I don't need to consider, right? Now for 10th bit, 10th bit, right? It is a RAM, so 10th bit must be zero. It is a RAM, so 10th bit must be zero. Ninth and eight bit that is used to select between RAM. Now, as this is RAM one, so the output from decoder should go from this line. This line. So to select this one, the ninth and eight bit must be zero zero. So ninth bit and eight bit must be zero zero. Okay. For remaining one two seven. As this is the starting address, <coughs> all bits are, all 7 bits are 0. Same way, <coughs> for that RAM, I want to find out the ending address, ending address. So for ending address, <coughs> again same RAM, so for RAM and for RAM 1, now it is ending address, so the ending address is one 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 seven times because one twenty eight means how many bits seven bits so starting is all seven zero ending is all seven one right same thing I need to do for RAM two so in this case this is for RAM so it must be zero is RAM 2. So, ninth bit is this thing. So, this must be selected so, 0 1. So, 0 1. Rest will be same. Starting means all 0. This will be same. RAM 2 and ending is all 1. So, same thing is written here. Right? So, 10th bit. This is the RAM. 10 bit is 0, 9th and 8 bit, this is a RAM 1, 10th bit for RAM or ROM, this 2 bit, which RAM, right, so first, so 0, 0, rest are 0, so hexadecimal equivalent for this number is, as 11 to 16, all are 0, so 0, 0, 0, 0, 4 times 0, this is hexa representation. Same way ending 0, 9th and 8, 0, 0, and all 1. Right? If I convert this into hexa, make a group of 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. This is the first group. Then second group, and this will be all 0. 0, 0, 7, F. This is the ending address. RAM 2. What is change? This will remain as it is, as this is the starting 1 to 7 will be all 0. That is all 0. If it is ending, the 1 to 7 will be 1. Just you need to play with the selection of your RAM and ROM. Right? So, as this is a RAM, so in all these case, this will be 0, 0, 0. Right? Here also 0, 0. RAM 0, so 0, 0. 0, 0. This is 0, 1, 0, 1, right? And then convert into hexa. Same way, RAM 3, what is saying? This one, 1, 0, 1, 0. RAM 4, 1, 1, 1, 1. Now, ROM. As you know, 11 to 16, <clears throat> right now not used. So, 10th to select between RAM and ROM. So, now 10th bit is 1. You can see 10th bit is 1. Now remember, 8 and 9, 9 is used as address in ROM, right? So these are the 9 bit address given to ROM. So this is the starting address in ROM. Starting address in ROM. This is the ending address in ROM. This is ending address in ROM. Okay. So what is the use of this? Right. So if your address is between this 0080 00 ff then that address or that data must be 
from RAM. Okay, you are accessing RAM 2. If your address is you giving is 0, 0200 0, 0 and 03 ff, then it is from RAM or address is of RAM. Right, so this thing you can tell, or sometimes from this configuration, from this configuration, you can construct your circuit. Right, you can construct your circuit. So, this is a memory address map of CPU memory connection that we have seen. Okay.